Hello dear friends, this is Fungai Murambiwa from Randa Washi Ministries. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel called The Servant of the Lord Ministries and give a like to my videos. How very important it is that your family and mine personally study the lessons of God's holy word, the Bible. For such a study can bring us eternal life as we grasp its eternal principles and make them our own through faith in, our, in Jesus Christ our Lord and personal Savior. Learning God's scriptures and accepting them into our lives, we are prepared for the high school of heaven above. And what will be the glories of, it, of that eternal land of peace and happiness is pictured for us in the word of God, a land where we shall walk beside quiet waters and ever discover new lessons from the things of nature about us, not only for ourselves, but for our loved ones. This is what we want, that we with them might inherit that better land, that we might walk its grassy slopes, gaze upon its myriad wonders, and know that the pain and sorrow of earth is forever past, that this may be the experience of each viewer and listener of these presentations, so filled with the word of God, is my sincere and humble prayer. Amen. Our lesson will be based on a question and answer approach, for it is one of the most powerful tools of learning. It is also divided into small subsections, which will be highlighted during the course of the lesson. Today's lesson is called The Life and the Teachings of Jesus Christ. Subtopic, the obedience of faith. What command did the God of heaven give to Abraham? Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Genesis 12, verse 1. Did Abraham obey this command? So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and the Lord went with him. And Abraham was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Verse 4. Of what was Abraham's obedience the result of fruit? By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed to go out unto a place which he was to receive for an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. Hebrews 11, verse 8, Revised Version. What later command did the Lord give to Abraham? And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Genesis 22, verse 2. Upon what ground were the previous promises made to Abraham later renewed? And said, By myself have I sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Verses 16 to 18. What was it that enabled Abraham to obey the great test? By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Hebrews 11, verse 17. Of what were the works of Abraham in evidence? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? James 2, verse 21. By his actions or works, what was shown to be perfect, seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. Verse 22. What is genuine faith? In Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availed anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worked by love. Galatians 5, verse 6. What is the purpose of the grace of Christ? Through whom? We received grace and apostleship and obedience of faith among all nations for his name's sake. Romans 1 verse 5. 
revised version. What was the effect of the apostles preaching upon the hearers? And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Acts 6 verse 7 How highly does God regard obedience in the lives of men? And Samuel said, Had the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fate of rams. First Samuel 15 verse 22 what example of obedience to the will of the Father has Christ given to us? And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Philippians 2 verse 8 At what great cost did even he learn the lesson of obedience? Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Hebrews 5 Verse 8. To whom did Christ become the author of salvation? And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Verse 9. How complete should this obedience he be? Casting down imaginations and every high thing that ex exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought. To the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5. What important fact did Jesus mention about the Pharisees? And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Mark 7, verse 9. What will be the future of those who refuse to obey the gospel of Christ? And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians 1, verses 7 to 8. What is the result of faithfully obeying the truth by the enabling grace of Christ? Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. First Peter 1 verse 22. If you be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Isaiah 1 verse 19. Our next subtopic is called regeneration. What was the mission of Christ to the earth? For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Luke 19, verse 10. From what does Christ redeem us? Christ yet redeemed us from the case of the law, being made a case for us. Galatians 3, verse 13. Who shall see God? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Matthew 5, verse 8. What relation must those who see God sustain to him in this life? Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. 1 John 3, verse 2. How does one become a child of God? For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Galatians 3, verse 26. What is said of him who has faith in Christ? Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. 1 John 5, verse 1. But what does living faith in Christ include? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. James 2 verse 26 When is faith effectual? And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. 1 John 3 verse 22 Is it necessary to do the things that we know are pleasing to God in order to maintain living faith? For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemns us not, then we have confidence toward God. 1 John 3, verses 20 to 21. But still, will keeping the law justify anyone? If not, why not? Therefore, by the deeds of the law, 
they shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Romans 3, verse 20. How are we justified? Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5, verse 1. In what condition were we before being justified? For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. Romans 7, verse 9. How does God take away condemnation? Even when we're dead in sins, yet quickened us together with Christ. Ephesians 2, verse 5. What does the apostle in another place call this quickening? According to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Titus 3, verse 5. What is one evidence of regeneration? We know that we've passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. 1 John 3, verse 14. Before men's fall, to what did he especially have access? And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. Genesis 2, verse 9. After Adam transgressed what was done to him, so he drove out the men and he placed at the east of the garden, Eden, cherubim, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Genesis 3, verse 24. What was cursed because of the fall? Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Genesis 3, verse 17. In the sin of our first parents, to whom did they yield their inheritance? While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the, of the same is he brought in bondage. 2 Peter 2, verse 19. After the fall of men, did the earth pass into the hands of Satan? And the devil, taking him, this is Jesus, up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I will give it. Luke 4, verses 5 to 6. Will the possession purchased by the blood of Christ be restored again to men? In whom also, after that he believed, he was sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest, this is pledge, of our inheritance until re the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory. Ephesians 1, verses 13 to 14. But in redeeming the possession, the earth, as well as men, must be cleansed from the curse. How will this be done, and what will, will, what will be the result? Looking for and the hasting under the coming of the day of God, where in the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall be made with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for the new heavens and the new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Second Peter 3, verses 12 to 13. When will the regeneration of the earth take place? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which ye have followed me, in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Matthew 19, verse 28. What will be the condition of the earth when redeemed? For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God, of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. Habakkuk 2, verse 14. See also Numbers 14, verse 21. Will the earth ever be cursed again when once redeemed? And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall save him. Revelation 22, verse 3. Will men regain the right to the tree of life which was forfeited through sin? Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. 
Revelation 22, verse 14. Our next subtopic is called Birth and Early Life of Christ, where in the Bible is given the first promise of the Savior from sin. And the Lord said unto the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and they shall bruise his heel. Genesis 3, verse 14 to 15. Through whose descendant was the promised restoration to come through? To thee, this is Abraham, who I gave it, and to thy seed forever. Genesis 13, verse 15. Who was this promised seed? He said not, and to, seed, and to seeds as one of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Galatians 3, verse 16. What town was predicted to be the best to be the birth of the Christ. And he, this is Herod, demanded of, of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, Matthew 2, verses 4 to 6. See also Micah 5, verse 2. Of whom was Christ to be born? Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah 7, verse 14. What name was Joseph told to give the promised son when he was born? And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, verse 21. At his birth, what message did the angel bring to the shepherds abiding in the field? And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I will bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Luke 2, verses 10 to 11. What was the song of praise that the voice of angels sang that night? And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Verses 13 to 14. What important prophecy of Isaiah was fulfilled when Christ was born? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Isaiah 9, verse 6. What descriptive names did Isaiah give to him? And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Verses 6 to 7. What did the godly Simeon say when he saw Jesus. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now latest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people. Israel. Luke 2, verses 27 to 32. Upon seeing Jesus, what were the words of the aged prophetess Anna? And she coming in, the, in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord, and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Verse 38. What did the wise men from the east do when they had found Jesus? When they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down, down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. Matthew 2, verse 11. Why did Joseph flee to Egypt with Jesus and his mother? When, and when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For a road will seek the young child to destroy him. Verse 13. How does John the Revelator describe this satanic age to destroy Christ? And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour a child as soon as it was born. Revelation 12, verse 14. 
By what means did Herod seek to kill Jesus? Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wrath, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and all the cause thereof, from two years old and under. Matthew 2, verse 16. After Herod's death, to what town did Joseph and his family move? And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it may be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Verse 23. How does the Bible describe the early life of Jesus? And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. And he went down with them, and came to Nazareth, and was subject unto them. Luke 2, verse 40 and 51. At the feast in Jerusalem, how did Joseph and Mary lose Jesus when he was 12 years old? By, but they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him, not they turned back, again to Jerusalem, seeking him, verses 45, 44 to 45. What was Jesus doing when they later found him? And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions, verse 46. What impact did his questions and answers have upon the spiritual leaders of Israel? And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. Verse 47. How does scripture summarize Christ's childhood and youth? And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and men. Verse 52. Our next subtopic is called a sinless life. What testimony is born concerning Christ's life on earth? Who did not sin, neither was God found in his mouth. 1 Peter 2, verse 22. What is true of all other members of the human family? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3, verse 23. With what question did Christ challenge his enemies? Which of you convinces me of sin? John 8, verse 46. To what extent was Christ tempted? He was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Hebrews 4, verse 15. In his humanity, of what nature did Christ partake? For as much then as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him, that had the power of death, that is, the devil. Hebrews 2, verse 14. How fully did Christ share our common humanity? Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Verse 17. Where did God in Christ condemn sin and gain the victory for us over temptation and sin? For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful, of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Romans 8 verse 3. By whose power did Christ live the perfect life? I can of mine own self do nothing. John 5 verse 30. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. John 14 verse 10. What unselfish purpose did Jesus ever have before him? For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. John 6, verse 38. Our next subtopic is called Our Pattern, Helper, and Friend. How alone should the Christian walk? He that said he abided in him, ought him also so to walk, even as he walked. 1 John 2, verse 6. See also Colossians 2, verse 6. What mind should be in us? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians 2, verse 5. While yet but a child, what example of obedience to parents did he present to us? 
and went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. Luke 2, verse 51. How are, he, how are his childhood and youth described? And Jesus in, increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and men. Verse 52. What example did he give us in regard to baptism? Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have no need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering, answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Matthew 3, verses 13 to 15. How important was prayer in his life? He went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Luke 6, verse 12. He took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. Luke 9, verse 28. To what kind of work did Jesus dedicate his life? Who we went about doing good? Acts 10, verse 38. What was it that caused Jesus to leave the riches of heaven and come down and live here on earth. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that he through his poverty might be rich. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9. When misunderstood, reviled, and mistreated, what did he do? When he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him, that judged righteously. 1 Peter 2, verse 23. How did he pray for those who crucified him? Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Luke 23, verse 34. See also Acts 3, verse 17. What did the Bible predict his life would be like? Thou hast loved righteousness, and hated iniquity. Therefore God even thy God yet anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Hebrews 1 verse 9. How powerfully can Jesus bring us salvation? I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Isaiah 63 verse 1. What was Christ's purpose in turning, in coming to this world? For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Luke 19 verse 10. Through what was Christ made a complete and perfect Savior? For it became him for whom, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Hebrews 2, verse 10. As a result of his suffering and temptation, what is Christ able to do? For in that he himself had suffered, being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Verse 18. How complete a Savior is he. Wherefore, he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Hebrews 7, verse 25. For what is he able to keep us? Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Jude 24 and 25. What does Jesus, our pattern, helper, and friend, call those who accept him? Henceforth, I call you not servants. I have called you friends. John 15, verse 15. What kind of friend is he? There is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Proverbs 18, verse 24. What is the evidence of a genuine friend? A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Proverbs 17, verse 17. Our next subtopic is called Sufferings of Christ. Why did Christ come into the world? This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. First Timothy 1 verse 15. What prompted God to give his son to die for men? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3 verse 16. See also first John 4 
verse 9 and 10, and Romans 5, verse 8. What did the prophet say Christ would be called to endure? He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before he hears his dump. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Isaiah 53, verse 7 to 8. Must not Christ have known beforehand of these things? Then he took unto him the twelve, and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and shall be mocked, and spitefully entreated, and spitted on, and they, and they shall scourge him, and put him to death. Luke 18, verses 31 to 33. How did the Savior feel when the sins of the world were upon him? And he took him with Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then he said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. Matthew 26, verses 37 to 38. In his distress, for what did he pray? And he went a little further, and fell on his face, on his face, and prayed, saying, "O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt." Matthew 26, verse 39. How great was the agony of his soul! And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling to the ground. Luke 22, verse 44. After this remarkable prayer. What happened to cause him more grief? And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them, and drew near to, unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? Luke 22, verses 47 to 48. To what place was he taken? Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. Luke 22, verse 54. While at the high priest's house, what act of Peter's caused the Savior additional suffering? Another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Amen, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while we yet speak, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. Luke 22, verses 59 to 61. What reproachful things were done to Christ while he was at the high priest's house. And the men that held Jesus mocked him and smote him when they blindfolded him. They struck him on the face and asked him, saying, Prophesy, who is it that smote thee? Luke 22, verses 63 to 64. Where was Christ next taken? And as soon as it was day, the elders of the people and the chief priests and the scribes came together and led him into their council. Luke 22, verse 66. What was their object in taking him there? Since it was not in their power judicially to sentence him. Then said they all, Art thou then the Son of God? And he said unto them, Ye say that I am. And they said, What? Need we any further witness? For we ourselves heard, heard of him his own mouth. Luke 22, verses 70 to 71. Having procured the pretext, they sought what they next do. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. Luke 23, verse 1. When Pilate desired to let Christ go, how did they remonstrate? And they were the more fierce, saying, He stirred up the people teaching throughout Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. Luke 23, verse 5. When Pilate heard that Christ had been in Galilee, what did he do? And as soon as he knew that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Jerusalem at that time. Luke 23, verse 7. 
Did the chief priests and scribes follow Christ before a rod? And the chief priests and scribes too stood and vehemently accused him. Luke 23, verse 10. What indignity did a rod put upon the Savior? And a rod which his men of war set him at naught, and mocked him, and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe, and sent him again to Pilate. Luke 23, verse 11. When Christ was again brought before Pilate, what did Pilate propose to do? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. Luke 23, verse 22. At this proposition, how did Christ's accusers act? And they were instant, earnest, with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified. And the voice of them and of their chief priests prevailed. Luke 23, verse 23. Besides yielding to the clamors of the Jews, what cruelty did Pilate inflict upon Christ? Then Pilate before took Jesus and scourged him. John 19, verse 1. What shameful treatment did he receive from the soldiers? And when they had plattered a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head, and they reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him, and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit upon him, and took the reed, and smote him on the head. Matthew 27, verse 29, and verse 30. After bringing him to the place of crucifixion, what did they offer him to stupefy him? They gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gown, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. Matthew 23, verse 34. What prayer did he utter as they were nailing him to the cross? Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Luke 23, verse 34. With what ways did they taunt him while on the cross? Likewise, also the chief priests mocking him with his scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and you and will believe him. Matthew 27, verses 41 42. As he crowd, cried out in agony on the cross, what was again offered him? And straight away, one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. Matthew 27, verse 40. What closed this terrible sin? When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. John 19, verse 30. What wonderful demonstration attested nature's sympathy with the dying Son of God. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. Luke 23, verses 44 to 45. Was it necessary for Christ thus to suffer? For it became him from whom, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Hebrews 2, verse 10. What follows? From the, from the fact that God gave us his only son. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Romans 8, verse 32. Thank you so much, dear friends, for tuning in to listen to this presentation. May God bless you. At this moment, I want to pray with you. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, Thank you so much for teaching us about the life and teachings of Jesus Christ. How Christ was born, lived, died on the cross, resurrected, and is on the right hand of glory. Oh, for our sins. Oh, what marvelous redemption. What marvelous love. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. You loved us so much that you gave us your only begotten son. People may give, but few do love. But no one can love without giving. You loved and you gave all, the best gift of heaven, your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. Thank you so much for this wonderful gift that you gave us in Christ Jesus, so that when you believe, when you are raised, is Moses raised the serpent in the wilderness, 
you might draw all men unto you who are very grateful and thankful for this for the gift of the Son of, G of God, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross to save us from all our sins. We pray this humbly in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.